Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Lightning Storm here, and today we're gonna go talk about the basics of friendship bracelet making. So, friendship bracelets can be come in all shapes and forms. And, for example, this is a Chinese staircase, and these two are both examples of square knot. And so on and so forth. But, what you need to know for the basics is what kind of string you need, how to cut the string, and how to take care of your string. Because... When you're making friendship bracelets, the most important thing you can have is string. So, start with, there are two different types of string that you can use. Um, there is six ply, where basically there are six different strings. And there are one ply, where there's basically just one string and you I would recommend using the six ply string because it comes at the same price but say you wanted a thinner bracelet all you gotta do is separate three of the ply out or something or two or however many you want so you can easily make a thinner bracelet but with the one ply string you got one str you got one way to do things um, the other thing about one pl about three pl six ply string is that you can also use it for cross stitching, where you'll use strings and sets of twos and two ply ones. So basically, this is six ply. So if you're doing cr cross stitch, you can use one string three times, basically by cut splitting six ply into three two plies. So that's one reason to get the six ply string. So, I have, right with me here today, two different brands of string. Um, that doesn't have a brand name. So, I would recommend just getting whatever the cheapest string is. Um, and this is because furniture bases, you don't need such an expensive string to do special stuff. If you're doing cross-stitching, I would definitely recommend the higher grade of string because, or actually DMC specifically. So this is DMC. So DMC is the string that I would recommend for cross-stitching because 90% of any patterns you will ever find are based on the DMC coloring system. Um, whereas these other, this off-brand, I have uh, okay, JMP coats. It's just an off-brand, it doesn't really matter. Um, you'll get for all except for like the whites in DMC, they'll have number codes. For example, I know red happens to be 666 because it's red and, you know, red. <laughs> uh, but this off-brand just has the color name, which means it won't be, when you're doing cross-stitching, it won't be as specific as to what you need. So this string was like, and this is not, this is a small section of it. There's, I've sorted out, these are the tie dye colors. Um, I have some up here. I have some in a bag that are duplicates. These are just the ones I happen to have opened and used a lot of. Um, but there were like 100 strings for nine bucks. DMC, I uh, got the white, like six, six, Skein. So this is a skein. It's basically one. I don't know what the word for it. It's a skein. <laughs> it's a skein of string. Um, but basically, for the DMC, I bought six skeins of the white string, and it cost me on sale like three bucks for six skeins, where I got a hundred of them for like nine. And I think it was like what is gonna run me six bucks 
to get the six skeins. No. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's three. Because they're like 50 cents each. Whereas these were like less than 25 cents each, I think. But yeah. So that's why I'd recommend getting just cheapo, cheapo, if you're just going to be using them for friendship bracelets. So that's string. Um, other supplies you want to have, I'd recommend having, obviously, a pair of scissors so you can cut things. Um, some kind of writing utensils you want to write down patterns, numbers of things you've... So, say you're doing eight stitches of this, or eight knots of this color, and eight knots of the other color, and you have five of this color, and so on and so forth. You want to ask something to write that down. I try to just remember it, or estimate, but, <laughs> yeah. If you want to actually be precise... I would recommend having a marker. Um, if you're doing fancy lettering uh, on bracelets, I'd recommend having graph paper to graph out how the lettering would work. So, that's the basic supplies. Oh, and I have a little baggie for my scraps. So that's the supplies. Um, now, I'm going to talk about care and keeping of your string. So as you can see, all of most of my strands, um, unless they're dying um <laughs> are nice and neatly aligned with a little wrap on top of the um plastic bit and i have some of the plastic bit so that if i slide it i can just slide the little wraps off because that makes it easy <laughs> and it doesn't get caught on it as long as you don't try and slide it off but yeah so i wrap it on the little plastic thing just to make it easier to get off because the plastic thing you can hold steady and it goes oh, doo -doo 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 -doo. but yeah i don't want to do that right now um, but when you're pulling out string, you don't want to just pull randomly. It just, no. Just no. <laughs> um, that can mess up the entire of the string, causing messes like this one. Yay! Now, this one isn't very much of a mess, because I can just pull there, and it becomes a loop again. But that one's a problem, because it's like, so, there's so little string remaining. Um, so I'm just gonna wrap it up and show you guys how to wrap them up. Um, but, so, when you're pulling a skein out, my recommendation is to hold gently on both of these plastic bits, because it slides neatly between those, and comes out nicely. And if you encounter resistance, you want to make sure that you untangle whatever is tangling it up, or else it will just become a mess. So yeah, don't just pull randomly. And you just... For when you're starting a new skein, um, obviously my old skeins all have their little tied up bits. But when you're starting a new skein, such as this one, you'll see that there's this floppy string at the top. But you can't see the second end of the string. Always use the floppy end at the top. Because that one will be the one that's nice and neatly wrapped outside. The other one's going to be inside the wrapping and makes lots of mess. <laughs> so that's how you want to open up. A skein. So, say that doesn't very work very well, and you lose an end cap. Well, losing one end cap is not a big deal. You just slide it to the middle, like so, and keep going. Now, say you make a total mess, and both end caps come off. Then you want to learn how to make one of these. Now, these are a neat way to store it because when you want to put out, you just stick your finger in one of the loops and your pinky in the other loop and unwrap the middle and then it should unwrap nice and neatly going around your fingers. Unlike a knotted skein. <laughs> so, yeah. And now let me show you how to make one of these. So, I have two rather knotted skeins, so I'm going to show you twice. First with this one because it's more loose. So I'm going to take off my other end cap, throw it away. You don't need it anymore. Unless you want to keep it for memory, but I don't understand the point of that. So when you're starting this game, you're going to want your finger and pinky. And I'd put my other fingers outside it, so you don't get them trapped inside. So you're going to start by pinching it with one hand, and then wrapping it around your pinky. I like to use the joints of my finger because that makes the yarn sit nice, or thread sits nicely. I also do it with yarns and make yarn balls. <laughs> uh, I like crocheting and knitting and stuff, so yeah. And you wrap it around, and we come to knots like this one. 
you have both hands technically still available, so you can gently pull it out and fix the knots. So, basically you keep going through this process, winding it, and then removing the knots, because it will, I promise you, it will get knotted when you're trying to do this. So, you want to make sure that you try and unknot it as best as possible. So, you knot it, unknot it early so that it doesn't get tight knots, which you can't unknot and have to cut the string, therefore wasting string. So, basically, this allows you to waste as minimal string as possible. And when you're done wrapping it up, oh, I got a big knot. Trust me, knots will occur, you've just got to take care of them. And there's a loop. Usually, if it's a large knot, there's a loop that's causing it. And you can identify it and remove it. And now it's a nice on a string. But yeah, so you'll wrap it all the way up. And then when you have about another finger to thumb's worth, you will take it. And I like to use my uh, one of the two fingers that are remaining. So either finger... You pull it in, basically this makes a loop, and then you stick the tail. So basically, what I'm doing, let me show you guys a little closer. So what I'm doing is, I have it like this, I pull it behind, stick the tail through the loop, and pull it tight. So basically, this means that it won't come undone, but that when I want it, I just have to pull from there, and it'll come undone. And then you just wrap it up around the middle. And voila, you have a nice little string. But yeah, so that's basic yarn care, or dread care, whichever you want it to call it. Both will work. Um, but yeah, so that's threads. And I'm not going to do this one right now. I'll do it later. Um, so that's how to care for your snacks. Threads. Now the one more thing I want to cover is how you're going to pull out your thread. So there's two different ways you can pull thread out of a thread out of a skein. Well, so there's two different lengths you will be using to make friendship bracelets and stuff. One is an arm length. So this is my little person here. I'm making a little smiley face. Him or her, it doesn't matter. So this is a little person, and these are their arms. So, the two measurements are an arm's length. So this is from your finger fingertip up to your shoulder where you'll cut it. So fingertip to shoulder where you're going to cut it. Or wingspan, which is fingertip to fingertip. So it'll be fingertip to fingertip, pulling all the way out to the sides of your body, like this little guy is demonstrating. So those are the two ways you're going to do it. So when I say you're going to need a wingspan of X number of colors. You're going to need to pull that way. So yeah, that's the basics of threads, thread care, and how, and the different measurements you'll be using. You can also measure them out more specifically, but usually an arm, usually the arm's length or work, the wingspan creates the right length to go around your wrist or whatever. So... That's why we use those measurements. But yeah. So I hope you enjoyed learning the basics of thread care and friendship stuff from friendship bracelet making. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos on friendship bracelets and stuff, please leave comments on what types of friendship bracelets you'd like me to see, what you'd like me to show, or if you want to see other kinds of things, leave that down in the comments below. If you want to see more, again, a like the video, subscribe, follow me. Um, I'm going to create a little series for the friendship bracelets. Um, some of the ones I'm looking at doing are the fishtail chevron, um, the diagonal line, um, braids obviously, and, um, square knots and the Chinese staircase. So, I have a few of them in mind already. If you want to see specific types, special colors, what have you, just let me know down in the comments and I'll probably answer your questions. So thanks for watching, have a nice day, and goodbye.